I'm standing on the sands of Ballyhalbert Bay, which is in the Arch Peninsula, County Down, Northern Ireland. RAF Ballyhalbert was used for the protection of coastal waters for our convoys as they travelled up and down the sea, and for the city of Belfast and the local towns as well. You'll see a concrete plinth over my shoulder, and that concrete plinth was a light on a large pole, a row of them along the coastline, bringing the air traffic from during the war from the seaward side into Ballyhalbert airfield. And these lights were lit up for a flash as the aeroplanes were coming into land, so not to give away their position to enemy fighters or anything like that. We're standing in the old disused airfield at Ballyhalbert, which was opened in 1941 in the war years. And behind me, there is an air raid shelter. And your aircraft would have been dispersed round the aerodrome here. And these concrete roadways, which we're seeing, were serviceable for the fuel and for the mechanics to come and work at the airplane and the pilots. And just imagine that there was a a flash attack by the Germans, which they did. They came in their aircraft, just fighter aircraft, and came down and blitzed the place. So if that was to happen, all the personnel that were working in the airfield could run to the nearest shelter, which is only roughly 30 yards away at most places you would be working. So that's the safety shelter that could save your life. All of this land around here was originally just pure farmland and when the wartime years were coming and there was a panic on to get aerodromes built, you, your farmland was vested off you and you were shifted to another farm or given another spot or reimbursed with money, depending what it was. But today, well, it's still farmland here, cattle are grazing just behind us here, but it is owned by developers now and there'll be a tranche of houses built here eventually at some point in time. My uncle had a farm adjacent to the old airport and they had a couple of fields left after they had taken the most of it for the airport and they were planting potatoes. I think it was round about Easter weekend and uh, maybe they were training and uh, a plane mis misguided landing and they ended up in the potato field. But uh, thankfully everybody was, there was no injuries, everybody got out okay. Well apparently those guys were Polish and uh, a lot of the boys that were built at round Lastry were Polish. Just listening to what my uncle had, been, had said years ago, he had probably gotten to know some of them. The RAF guys traded a bit of maybe stuff that was rationed hard to pick up round here for maybe milk and food that they couldn't get. This quarry uh, was used to provide the stone which built the runways for the planes at the airfield. Um, it was owned by my grandfather and um, I remember hearing stories from my grandfather and my father uh, about what took place in the quarry here. There was a man, Tommy Robison, uh, he was from Ballymena. He arrived one evening very, very late on with a steam engine uh, and two caravans and all his uh, equipment for crushing rock. Um, I think he was here uh, for at least two years crushing rock. Um, which was um, they, they, they drilled down into the down into the rock face uh, every four feet, uh, and then they blasted it. Uh, last thing at night, they blasted it, and then the next morning they went in. There was a team of men went in, and they sorted the stone. The small stone was loaded directly on to army lorries and farmers provided tractors. They drew it uh, to the airfield. 
the bigger stones was uh, drew by, uh, my grandfather had two horses, which drew the bigger stones up to a crusher, which sat slightly higher. Uh, the stones then were put into the crusher. The crusher crushed the stones, which was powered by the steam engine. So you can imagine the steam engine was going, the big belt was going, um, there was men, there was men, there was, there was actually blacksmiths permanently on site, sharpening drill bits, chisels, crowbars. There was a hive of acti just activity um, uh, to provide the stone. Um, and I think I heard my granda saying there was a thousand ton a day went out of this quarry um, to go to the airfield. Every night my grandfather would have went up to see the man, the actual foreman, to get the, you know, the count of the tonnage so he could keep it in his books and keep the records right. And this was a very, very dark night. Um, my father, my father was saying, everywhere was blacked out. He says, he says, my grandfather actually walked past the entrance to where the, the, the fellas were, you know, had their, their tents and their, and their caravans. And um, while they were up uh, talking about this, my father seen the lights, the, the bright, bright red lights and burning flames. And that was the first night that the bomb Belfast. And he says, you could see it as plain in the sky. He says, this, this, this haze of just flame, you know, which must have been terrifying, absolutely terrifying, you know, in those days. But that was just one of the stories that I remember them talking about, you know. So we're in the main centre of an airfield, which is where the control tower is. And the main runway ran from the shore right up into Glastry, about a mile in distance. That was the main runway, and this would have been a hive of activity around here. The control tower behind me was built to a standard pattern over all the airfields. And there were temporary structures that were never intended to last terribly long. And this one will eventually degrade and go. But at the very top, you can see the big window. Uh, that was a meteorological center. That gave you uh, the weather settings, the cloud cover, wind speeds, and all that kind of stuff. The big windows let you see the approach of the aircraft and see what was going around the panoramic view of everything that was going on in this airfield. And the main approach from the sea uh, is just straight in line with it. These old control towers were not listed buildings in any way and therefore there's not a lot of interest in them and they will get dilapidated and either a developer buys it or a farmer takes it over and uses it or it's demolished. So that's the outlook for these old buildings. These old brick walls hold a lot of history and there was two famous Polish squadrons here, 303 and 315, both Spitfire squadrons. Squadron 315 was based here at Ballyhalbert in the summer of 1943, followed by Squadron 303 based here in the spring of 1944. Squadron 303 was the highest scoring squadron in the Battle of Britain. Today we're down here with the mayor to launch this interpretive board just to get that information into public grounds, uh, especially with the amount of Polish airmen that served here. Well, the Bally Halbert airfield in itself is, is an important historic story and the one that needs to be remembered. And it's very easy to lose the Second World War narrative if we don't have uh, a piece of information readily accessible to the public who want to come and visit the area. It's important we remember today is the historical link between RAF Bally Halbert 1941 to 45 and our Polish brethren and comrades who fought against the Nazi and the Luftwaffe in the skies over Great Britain. 